Bye now, pay later, Australia's favorite invention. Seriously, I'm not kidding. People seem to really love this stuff and apparently we lead the world in terms of uptake. ZipPay and Afterpay alone have millions of customers across Australia and New Zealand. So for our countries which don't really have a huge population, this should be very alarming. And we haven't even included other copycat buy now pay later companies out there like these. In this day and age, you can literally buy now pay later anything. Renting a new place and can't afford the bond? Don't worry, just use FlexiBond. Can't afford to pay rent this week? It's okay, rent pay will save the day. Trouble paying your water bill this month? You'll be right, just use PayRight. Can't afford necessities like milk and bread? Use food pay and you'll be set. Do you want me to keep going? I can keep going, I have lots more of these. No? Yes? No? Okay, I'll do two more. Putting your kids to private school? Use EdStart and you'll be cool. Want to invest your money but don't have enough? Use stock pay and you'll be chuffed. Okay, so I don't want to keep going because it is getting pretty cringy at this point, but you get the message, right? Hopefully you get the message. And the message is, there are so many of these companies out there right now, so many buy now, pay later companies, and they're almost like leeches. And I'm so sorry for showing you that video, truly, I'm sorry, but I wanted to get the visual across to show you what these companies are like, trying to suck you dry with all your money. Now, as a consumer, you need to be very careful of this because before, what troubled the average person was credit cards. Credit cards were the absolute demon, credit cards were the devil. But now, we're seeing credit cards decline and they're being replaced by buy now, pay later because there's less regulation, it's much easier to use, there's no approvals mostly, and it's just very hassle-free. Young people seem to be leading the charge and there seems to be no signs of slowdown. Now, these companies are super smart, okay? They hire some of the most smartest people on the planet, great marketers, great data scientists, just absolute guns. And this is a story that they sell to their investors. The fact that the younger generation will be the driving force of buy now, pay later, have a look at this. So this is a next-gen index by Afterpay and it basically talks about how the younger generation is spending their money and how the payments landscape is changing and the focus is of course on Gen Z and millennials. So of course you've got the three generations right here, Gen Z which is my generation, then you have millennials and Gen X and older, one thing they haven't mentioned here or included is Gen Alpha, which is after Gen Z. These guys or these kids are pretty much in primary school, preschool, so of course, they're not just there yet. So straight away, you can see that Gen Z and Millennials are becoming the powerful force in the economy. And they're basically saying that right now, Gen Z and Millennials account for 36% of total retail spend right now. But in just eight years or so, this will grow to 50%, which is absolutely insane. You can see they're literally waiting for Gen Z to enter the work workforce. They're waiting for them to just get into work so they can start spending. These companies are basically playing the long game. And this is exactly what I mean. If these companies can somehow onboard people very early in their lives, we're talking teens, 20s, and 30s, you best believe later on in their life when these people turn 40, 50, and 60, they will still be using buy now, pay later, despite the fact that their incomes probably have gone up rapidly. If these companies can somehow onboard these people onto their ecosystem, it's gonna be very hard to let that habit go, and this is why it is so alarming. Companies like this already know that over time, Gen X, baby boomers, and the other older generations are gonna, you know, expire or pass away. Expire was a pretty bad way of putting it, but obviously they're gonna pass away over time, and millennials and Gen Z are going to take up a higher population of overall Australia. You can see that we are gonna pass the older generations or we're gonna be equal in population in around FY24. And after that, millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha are gonna be the majority of the population. So this is why it's so, so alarming and people should be taking note of stuff like this. So Afterpay and a lot of other companies are basically banking on that shift. And if they can, as I said before, if they can get people onto the ecosystem, get them to spend using buy now, pay later and not credit cards, you know, harvest their data and stuff like that, these companies are gonna be insanely dominant in the future, even more than what they are now. And as I said before, these companies are literally waiting for you guys to enter your peak earning years. So your lifetime value as a customer can be as high as possible. So you can see that right now, Gen Z and millennials are, well, millennials are earning steadily more and more, but Gen Z's peak earning years are gonna be increasing quite rapidly around the late 2020s. So, you know, that's gonna mean more spending power and more dominance for buy now, pay later, should these new generations use buy now, pay later, which it seems like they definitely will. Now, if you're a young person watching this video or any person for that matter, I really hope this opens your eyes and it does ring some alarm bells because it is fairly scary. I fear the day in 10, 20 years time where we have a massive generation of people 
stuck with buy now pay later debt where they have seven eight nine different direct debits coming out every single week they're not sure where their money's going they can't track anything they're not even sure what the direct debit is for because they bought something and they can't even remember what they bought in the first place like i can't even remember what i had for dinner like two days ago imagine trying to remember what you bought with afterpay four weeks ago which food item you bought or which drinks you bought that you're still trying to pay off four to six weeks later. We already spend $25 billion per year in gambling losses as a nation and we're some of the most heaviest gamblers in the world by different measures. In the future, we might even be some of the most biggest buy now pay later users as well. Now, this really makes me think when it comes to Australian fintech specifically, is this all we have to offer? Is buy now pay later the best we can do? It seems to me that every you know couple of months, I see a new buy now pay later company trying to target some really specific niche like we saw earlier with private school fees and i know that i'm probably very ignorant when it comes to these matters there are probably some really great companies that are out there in the fintech space that are not focusing on buy now pay later but it seems to me that the media attention always goes towards these buy now pay later players and not the ones that are trying to do some other interesting stuff as well let me know what you think on this in the future i will absolutely not be surprised to hear if a fintech app comes out where they try to track all of your buy now pay later commitments in the one app. So for example, if you've got Afterpay, ZipPay, Harm and all the other crap that I mentioned before, it'll basically try to you know, put all those commitments in the one app and it might even try to put all those commitments into four easy payments over time. So it's kind of like buy now pay later for buy now pay later, which is absolutely insane. It's, it's very deranged. So what is the solution for this? How can we get out of this buy now pay later rut that we're in? I don't know, okay, I don't have the answers. All right, I'm sorry. But here's what can help. Self-education, self-learning around personal finance, good money habits, investing, paying off debt through free resources like these. Now, I'm not saying everybody out there can basically budget themselves out of their situation because they can't, a lot of them can't, but the majority can. Now, look, the thing is I can sit here in this chair, turn on my camera, turn on my lights and just talk crap about buy now, pay later all day because there's so many companies out there globally. I've basically got like endless ideas. I can, this whole channel can be a trash talking buy now, pay later type of channel. And we can talk about how bad these companies are and how predatory they are. But at the end of the day, nobody really forces you to use buy now, pay later. You can always pay for it in full. And I think for most, we should place more emphasis on people being more accountable for their actions. I don't think we should sit here and just wait for the government to introduce more regulation to regulate these buy now pay later companies or wait for the government to finally introduce personal finance to teach kids about financial literacy in schools. Don't get me wrong, it'll be good if it actually happens, but we shouldn't just sit here and just wait for it. We should take action. If we know that financial literacy is a big problem in Australia and pretty much globally, we should be raising our kids with the good financial mindsets and habits and teaching ourselves as well always educating ourselves and taking charge and not just sitting around and just complaining about what's happening with these buy now pay later companies. You can't be 35, 40 years old and still be blaming school for not teaching you those financial concepts and blaming school for your financial downfall because at what point do you turn around and actually take responsibility for what you're doing and actually take charge because you can't really sit here and blame school forever. I think at some point you do need to take charge of what's happening. We also need to keep in mind whenever you use a service or a product that's free, always ask yourself this question. As a consumer, what am I giving up to use this product or service? Why is this company offering this for free? How does this company benefit from me using this product for free? You have to always ask these questions. There's a saying in tech, and I'm sure you've heard about it by now at this point, and it goes something like, if you are not paying for it, you are not the customer, you're the product being sold. In the case of Afterpay, yes, it's free if you pay everything on time and you don't pay their late payments and it's completely interest-free, but at the same time, by using their product for free, you are giving up your precious data, your spending details, your demographic details, what you're buying, what your interests are, and that stuff is so valuable. Because in the future, they know your interests, they know how you're like, they basically built a, a profile of you in terms of your interests, the stuff that you love, stuff that you hate, stuff that you're passionate about, and whatnot, and they can really target you and make you spend excessively. Whenever something is free, you have to always ask yourself that question because unless you're at your grandma's place, there's no such thing as a free lunch, my friends. Now, quick note before I end this video for full transparency, I have invested in some of the buy now pay later companies in this video. I still hold some shares, but the last time I bought those shares would have been in late 2020. So 
It's been about 1.5 years, so just thought I'd mention it. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna absolutely love my before pay video right here, where I try to convince you, strongly convince you to stay away from this app at all costs. So go check it out and guys, thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.